So today's lecture is phase lock loop. Um, so let us talk about this important concept in communication system. Phase lock loop. Okay. So what is uh, first of all, I will discuss what is the introduction to the phase lock loop. A phase lock loop is a negative feedback system. You must have studied in your EDC class that there are three component that, that what is a uh, negative feedback system and what is a positive feedback system. So because it's a loop and it is a negative feedback system, there are three components in the phase lock loop. One is phase detector. The other is a low pass filter. And uh, the third component is a voltage controlled oscillator within its loop. Now its purpose is actually to synchronize an output signal with a reference or input signal in frequency as well as in phase. Uh, the best example that I can give where you must have experienced the phase lock loop is, for example, uh, in your mobile uh, phone, uh, sometimes it happens that the signal does not come. So what you do is that you switch off your phone and you switch on once again, you reset your system. And then you suddenly find that the signal comes. It may happen in your Wi-Fi, it may happen in your, uh, even in your dish TV also, even it may happen in your phone. So you, you uh, switch it on again and the signal comes back. Actually that is the PLL, that's the phase lock loop in action. What happens is that uh, uh, the phase lock, uh, this loop has to remain locked uh, for a particular uh, frequency. I will explain that point. So it remains locked within that uh, frequency range. So the, it, it continues to receive the signal. But sometimes what happens, it comes out of the lock, right? In that case, when you switch it again, so it again uh, tries to synchronize and tries, tries to tune the signal and until the lock is achieved. So that is actually PLL in action at that point, right? So in the synchronized or the locked state, the phase error between the oscillators and output signal and the reference signal is zero. So let me just come to the block diagram of the phase lock loop. Then I will discuss these points uh, with you. Now, let me just uh, first discuss the, okay. This is the basic PLL system, right? The basic PLL system consists of a phase detector uh, the second component is the loop filter. The third component is the VCO, which is the voltage controlled oscillator. Now, the input to the phase detector is actually a phase detector. Produced, it produces a signal V5. Now, an input signal is with frequency Fn, right? And there is a feedback coming from uh, the VCO output, which is the F oscillate, FOSC. Uh, that's how it is denoted. So it is fed back to the, so there are two inputs to the phase detector. One is the input. One is certain reference signal or the input uh, signal frequency. The other is the uh, voltage uh, VCO output. So both these uh, frequency components are fed to the phase detector. Phase detector produces a voltage V5, produces a signal V5, which is proportional to the phase difference between the Fn and the FOC. So oh, in, incoming signal is Fn, the, uh, the VCO output is FOC. So whatever is the phase difference between the two signals, accordingly it produces a voltage, right? So this voltage is then uh, passed through the loop filter to remove any high frequency components. Now, basically this voltage is applied after going, after it goes through the loop filter, which is a low pass filter, basically, it is applied to the input of the VCO. Depending on this voltage, the voltage controlled oscillator produces oscillations, right? Whatever is this voltage that is produced by the phase detector, uh, accordingly, the uh, VCO, which is the voltage controlled oscillator, which is a device, it produces the frequency. And, it, and whatever the frequency VCO produces, it again goes back. Uh, to the phase detector input. Uh, and then uh, Fn is again compared with the FOC. So it again produces the uh, phase voltage based on the phase difference, right? So this loop continues until the lock condition is achieved. What is that lock condition? The lock condition is that the frequency of oscillation, which is FOC should be equal to Fn. This is the lock condition. Once the lock condition is there, then the signal is, uh, then the system is tuned to the incoming frequency and it will start receiving the signal. Clear? 
So a phase detector produces a signal V5 proportional to the phase difference between Fn and FOC. A loop filter, uh, it filters output voltage uh, V out that controls the frequency of the VCO. Basically, whatever is coming from, whatever the voltage is coming from the phase detector, uh, it filters it out, uh, it removes any uh, high frequency components and that voltage, uh, uh, the output of the loop, loop filter will be V out and that is fed to the VCO input. What is the voltage controlled oscillator? It is, uh, it is, it gives us V out at the in, uh, we give V out at the input of the VCO, which determines the uh, frequency FOC of the periodic signal, right? Uh, basically, it produces a frequency based on the V out, which is uh, given at the input of the VCO. Now, a basic property of the uh, PLL attempts to maintain the frequency log which is this log, FOC is equal to Fn, between uh, VOC, VOSC, and Vin. Even if the frequency V Fn of the incoming signal, even if this frequency varies, but it tries to, it because of the feedback system, it tries to remain, it tries to maintain FOC equal to Fn, right? Now, assume that the PLL is in the locked condition, the frequency of the incoming, let's say if the frequency Fn increases slightly. So if the frequency in, of the incoming signal slightly increases, what will happen? The phase difference between the VCO signal, this VCO signal, which is fed back to the phase detector and the incoming signal will begin to increase. This phase difference will start increasing. As a result, the filtered output voltage increases. As a result, this filtered output voltage V out increases. And uh, this increase, uh, increased V out is fed to the voltage controlled oscillator, which further increases the FOs. So it's a kind of feedback system that goes, right, uh, to maintain this lock condition, which is FOC equal to Fn. So that is the job of uh, a phase locked uh, loop, right? Now, there are various stages of PLL operation. The three stages, there are three stages of the PLL operation. One is the free running stage. When no input is applied at the phase detector. So when this phase at the input of the phase detector, nothing is applied. No signal is applied to the phase detector. So whatever the frequency it produces, when no input is applied at the phase detector, the PLL output frequency is FOC. In that case, uh, in that case, the FOC is actually FO, what we will call as the FO. FO, the output of the uh, voltage controlled oscillator will be FO, right? It, where FO is free running frequency of the VCO. What is free running frequency? When no input is applied at the uh, phase detector. So this is known as the free running stage and the frequency that the VCO produces is called as the um, uh, free running frequency. The next stage is the capture stage. So when you when an input is applied at the phase detector, so it starts capturing the signal. That's the example that I gave you. When you switch on your uh, mobile once again, it starts capturing the incoming signal and tries to um, lock that frequency, right? So when an input is applied at the phase detector, due to the feedback mechanism, PLL tries to track the output with respect to the input. So it will try to track the output, right? with respect to whatever is the input signal coming. Now phase locked stage. The first stage is the free running stage when no input is applied. The second stage is the capture stage when the PLL, when the uh, loop is trying to capture the um, incoming signal, right? Due to the feedback mechanism. Third stage is the phase locked stage. Due to the feedback mechanism, the frequency comparison stops when FOC becomes equal to Fn. When this FOC becomes equal to Fn, then we will say that the um, PLL is locked and the frequency uh, comparison stops. Now there are, actually there are two ranges which are important in the PLL system. One range is known as the lock range. The other range is known as the capture range, right? If you look at this diagram, you will see that along the y-axis is the FOC, which is the output of the voltage controlled oscillator. And along x-axis is the input frequency, right? Now, uh, when uh, FO, this is FO, FO, what is this FO? FO is a free running frequency. When no signal is applied to the uh, 
uh, phase uh, PLL, right? When no input is applied, so this this is the free running frequency, which is F4. Now, the range of frequencies where the PLL remains in the log. So there is a frequency F min, and there is a frequency F max. This is this this range F max minus F min. This is known as the range. This is known the range which is um, given by F max minus F min is known as the lock range. If the frequency, if the incoming frequency goes beyond this range, what is that range I am talking about? One is F max minus F min. If it is go, if it goes out of this range, then the PLL will will not remain locked. And that's what happens when the mobile. when the when in when everything goes fine but your mobile is not able or your dish tv or your any electronic gadget is not able to receive the signal because the pll uh, the lock is broken so when there is a particular range for the pll for every pll system design and that range is f, f max minus f min if the signal incoming signal goes out of this range then the pll is totally unlocked and this range is known as the lock range and there is another range which is known as the capture range and which is given by fo minus fc and fo plus fc now what is this capture range when the pll tries to capture when an input signal is applied at the phase detector due to the feedback me mechanism pll tries to track the output with respect to so within this range it will try to initially it will try to capture the signal within this range only initially once the once the uh, once the incoming signal comes in the capture range so pll becomes locked after that the pll remains in locked condition uh, within this lock range so there are two ranges to be uh, understood one is the capture range the other is the lock range capture range is the initial uh, range within which you uh, your incoming signal must be there then only it will get locked and after it gets locked there is a kind of certain uh certain amount of frequency that is allowed within which it can uh, it can still remain in the locked stage and that range is known as the lock range so capture range is always less than the lock range this is important to be understood capture range is always less than the lock range now capture range of the pll the lock can be established again if the that's what i was again giving an example if you remember a few minutes back the you you try to understand what is written here the lock can be established again that's what i was trying to say when you are trying to establish the connection once again actually you are trying to establish the lock the lock can be established again if the incoming signal frequency which is f in gets close to f not so incoming signal frequency if it gets close to f not it will fall in the capture range and the loop will get locked once the loop is locked then for the loop to come out of the lock you you can you can have this range which is the lock range once it is locked capture range try to understand from the uh, words there capture range when it is trying to when it is trying to bring the pll in the lock condition and when it is locked so the range little bit extends and that is the lock range right so various frequencies are given so i hope this diagram is very clear and uh, the this block diagram is also clear that what are the what are the basic components in the pll system and how what are the various stages of the operations of the pll and what is lock range and um, capture range right so these are further uh, little uh, analytical treatment of the various components of the pll one the first component uh, is the phase detector so it is an analog a multiplier mixer can be used as a phase detector right which compares the phase at each input generates an output signal so two signals are there one is uh, omega in t plus phi uh, phi in uh, phi in is the phase uh, of the signal so this is the incoming signal this is the feedback signal which is basically coming from the voltage oscillator these two signals are compared and you produce a, a voltage v phi t which is given so you can apply a little bit of because this is multiplication of two cos signals then you can apply this formula cos uh, of two signals and if you solve it further v phi t will be equal to 
V phi t, which is the voltage, is proportional to the phase difference between the uh, between the uh, frequent between the phase coming from the uh, VCO output and the phase of the incoming signal. High frequency component. Now, high frequency component. Of course, this is the high frequency component. The second, this needs to be replaced with the low pass. Filter. That's the advantage of putting a loop filter. Uh, basically, loop filter is a low pass filter to remove the high frequency component. Right. So that's what is explained here. So V phi t is given by K D K D is the gain of the loop and uh, phi O C O S C minus phi n. Right. So this is the job of the phase detector. Then. Um, uh digital phase detector is then when all the components are in the uh, digital domain rather than using the analog multiplier or mixer here this is the analog multiplier or mixer you can use the digital version of that in that case you will have to use the xor gate rest of the things will remain the same right then there is a loop filter this is the uh, this is the transfer function of the loop filter which is a low pass filter Right, this is the um, uh, cutoff frequency of the filter. So, from uh, this is the basic circuit of a low pass filter. Low pass filter is an integrator, right? So, this is the circuit. Of, this is the circuit of basic integrator. So, loop filter will be. Uh, uh, you can use the. Um, you can use any sophisticated transfer function of the low pass filter also. But this is the very basic uh, uh, transfer function of a low pass filter. I think. There is no need to tell you about the uh, low pass filter design because we have already done in the DSP case. Rest of the things I have already explained accordingly, the output will be obtained. Now, the third component is the voltage controlled oscillator. In PLL applications, the VCO is treated as a linear time invariant system to obtain an arbitrary output frequency. Within the VCO tuning rate, a finite output is required, which is V out, which is, which is Applied at the input of the VCO. So let's define a phi OC minus phi in is phi zero. Uh, I mean, the equations are uh, self explanatory. So VCO uh, voltage controlled as oscillator will basically produce the, uh, uh, will basically produce a signal with frequency FOSC, right, depending on the uh, voltage difference coming from the phase detector. Loop filter is there in between the phase detector and the uh, voltage controlled oscillator to remove the high frequency component. So this voltage, because of this voltage, the frequency will change. And when it gets, when the two frequencies are compared at the phase detector, uh, the purpose is to uh, put the loop in the lock. All right. So that is a base. That is uh, the. PLL. That is the advantage and the, uh, I mean, the basic components of the PLL. Now let's look at the. Let let me come back to the previous slides that where this uh, PLL can be used. Now the majority of PLL applications fall into four main categories. One is frequency synthesis, most widely used. So PLL is also referred to as a frequency synthesizer. So we can generate the frequency. We can synthesize the frequency. Frequency and phase modulation and demodulation, data and carrier recovery, and tracking filter. And there are various classifications of PLL. It can be pure analog, it can be digital, right? Some, some components can be analog also, like phase detector, or it can be all digital PLL also, which is a digital loop in two uh, senses all digital components and all digital signals. So every, uh, every, combi uh, every possible um, structure is. Uh, can be designed, but the basic components will remain the same. Now, how are PLL used? So this is frequency synthesis. For example, a generate, generating a one gigahertz clock from a uh, 100 uh, megahertz reference in a CPU. For example, there is a CPU and you are giving a 100 megahertz reference signal. So using the PLL, you can generate the one gigahertz clock. Then extracting a clock from a random data stream. So if this is the random data stream, you can extract the clock using the PLL also. That is one. Uh, there, I'm not going to discuss how these applications are achieved, but these are, <coughs> excuse me, these are some of the applications of PLL where the PLL loop can be used. So reference cleanup, a low pass filter source synchronous uh, clock in high speed. So reference signal can be cleaned up to give it, so this is the dirty clock, and you can clean up the signal to give a very fine 
um, uh, output clock. Right. So these are the various applications of uh, using the uh, PLL as a uh, PLL loop, which is the phase lock loop. Right. Now another type of loop I will uh, explain. This is the brief history of um, PLL, but I will stop sharing this uh, presentation and I will discuss one more loop. Let me just uh, share the, okay, all right. So the another type of uh, uh, loop that I would like to discuss is the Costas loop, right? So let me talk about the Costas loop first. Before I talk about the Costas loop, there is a, uh, there is a, there is a, there is an important uh, function to be performed at the receiver side, which is known as the carrier recovery. So you need to perform, you need to have the carrier, you need to know what is the carrier frequency because what happens is that you produce a carrier at the transmitter size side uh, using a crystal oscillator, right? So, uh, and you know that carrier, what is the carrier frequency? You try to generate the carrier frequency at the receiver side also, because you know the carrier frequency and you will generate the carrier frequency at the receiver side uh, using a crystal oscillator. But the problem is that the two crystal oscillators can never produce the same type of uh, frequency. So there will be, there will always be an offset. Uh, that offset is given by Delta F, which is F C dash, and FC, I will explain that point. So because of that carrier offset, what happens is from the transmitter side, we try to send a pilot signal towards the receiver. And once that pilot signal is received at the receiver, the receiver can uh, know what is the frequency coming. All right, so let us look at the uh, basic uh, communication system, how the carrier recovery can be done. Now let's say XT is the, uh, input signal and how do you do from the transmitter side how do you do the up conversion you multiply it with e to the power j2 pi fct fc is the carrier frequency so this is our baseband signal you try to multiply it with e to the power j2 pi fct where the uh, message signal is translated to higher frequency uh, domain this is known as modulation this is up conversion basically now how do you recover the signal at the receiver side whatever what you will get is this signal and how do you receive it? You multiply it with e to the power minus j2 pi fct. So these two um, factors will cancel out with each other and you will recover the original signal back. But this is a very ideal case. What happens in the practical cases, there is a phase difference term. There, there, there is a phase term which is introduced when you upconvert the signal, there is a phase term introduced in the, uh, in the signal. Now this phase term is due to the device delay and also due to the propagation delay. And at the receiver, how do you try to recover the signal? Because this is practical cases, this is the transmitted signal. And this is the received signal because of the, and this, this phi is the phase difference. How do you recover it? You again multiply it with e to the power minus j2 pi fc dash I'm using here. Why I'm using fc, this at the transmitter side, the carrier frequency fc, but I'm using fc dash. Because the two crystal oscillators, as I said, will never be able to produce the same uh, frequency, right? So there will be an offset. So delta F is equal to FC minus FC dash due to the difference in carrier crystal oscillators at transmitter and receiver. So carrier offset or carrier frequency, this is known as carrier offset or carrier frequency offset. And this phi is there, phi is known as the carrier phase offset. Because of this phi, uh, because uh, this will introduce the phase offset also. And this phase is offset is known as the carrier phase offset. So two problems are there. One is delta F, the other is phi. Now we must compensate for delta F and phi. In practice, instead of using exponential, in practice, as I was trying to uh, use the exponential signals, I can use a cost function also. Why to use a cost function? Because I will assume that everything is real. So XT is the message signal multiplied with the cost to pi FCT plus phi as I used here, XT e to the power J to pi FCT plus phi. This is my received signal. All right, instead of uh, using this exponential signal, I'm using here the cost signal, assuming that everything is real. So phi, again, the rest of the terms remains the same, right? Xt cost two pi Fct plus phi. So at the, uh, now I can, uh, using the Euler's formula, I can 
uh, I can write this cost term as e to the power j to pi f c t plus phi, and like this, a half of this term and this term. I can write it like this. So this is my received signal. X t cos 2 pi f c t plus phi is my received signal. Now I want to recover my signal back. I want to recover X t from down conversion. Ideally, what how can I recover the signal? What, what I need to perform the down conversion. How can I do the down conversion? R t into cos 2 pi f c t. As I was doing here, uh, R t, uh, how I was uh, how how I was trying to recover the signal x t e to the power j two pi f c t plus phi multiplied with e to the power minus j two pi f c t. I am not using exponentials here, but I am using the cos function. So I will multiply the R t signal, which is the received signal. What is this signal? X t cos two pi f c t plus phi into cos two pi f c t again uh, to recover the signal back. Right. Pass it through the low pass filter, keep the DC part and filter out high frequencies. I will be able to recover the uh, XT signal. Problem is I want to know phi and carrier. Problem is with the, uh, I want to know what is this phi and carrier frequency used at the transmitter. I want to know carrier phase and carrier frequency. What is the frequency that was used at the receiver, at the transmitter side, so that I can overcome that carrier offset. Now, First of all, I would uh, try to calculate this phi. So this is my received signal. What I will do is that, so that the uh, receiver end knows the carrier frequency, what I will do is xt, I will send xt plus one, right? For modulation, if I'm using a large carrier, then I'm adding one as shown below. That is, I'm adding a pure cosine. So what is the advantage of adding one here? xt plus one into cos two pi fct plus phi. So uh, if you multiply cos 2 pi fct inside xt cos 2 pi fct plus phi, and you will get a pure sign signal with the, uh, with the uh, phase difference. Now, what you can do is that to know the phase, right? This is, this is actually a pilot signal sent from the transmitter side. How can you know phi from here? You take the Fourier transform, you take the Fourier transform of this signal, RT, right? Uh, you take the Fourier transform. Once you take the Fourier transform, you will get you will get these signals. Once you try to plot the signals uh, using the Fourier transform, you will be corresponding to this frequency f minus f c. You will be able to find out the phase uh, once you get the Fourier transform, right? But this type of system uh, may give you an uh, uh, may give you uh, not correct the value of the phase. The other approach to get the correct value of phase is just square this signal. Just, uh, I, was, I was doing RT here, I was taking RT here, but there's another, another approach which is uh, squaring this signal. So uh, I, what I do is the R square T. This is known as squaring loop. So R square T and I do the squaring of this term and uh, why the squaring is done? Actually squaring is done to uh, to because squaring will always be positive to minimize the variations in this signal, right? The squaring uh, is done here. So this is the x square t. Uh, once you do the squaring and multiply it with the, um, um, uh, the you try to recover the signal, what you will get is you will you will get x square t equal to x average plus vt square. Since the since you have squared it you will get very less amount of variation, right? By taking Fourier transform, then we can take this peak and correspondingly, we can know the uh, phase value. In, in the solution, you will see that there comes out to be uh, two times the phase term. Uh, two because what you will get is four pi FCT, because basically you will get two times the phase term. And then if you divide the value by two, you will get the phase term. This Topic that this is the carrier recovery procedure, which is not there in your syllabus actually, but I just thought that let me um, let me do this thing also, uh, how to recover the carrier frequency and how what is the importance of carrier phase, what is carrier offset. But the important thing that is there in your syllabus is the Costa's law, which is parallel to the phase law. Let's look at what is Costa's law. Costa's loop operates directly on the received signal. Right, 
it can do carrier synchronization also and it can do demodulation at the same time that is the advantage of cost of proof it can do the carrier synchronization and demodulation at the same time and this is named after its inventor which is jp costa now this is my received signal rt let's say 80 is some message signal cos of omega ct plus theta theta is the phase so uh, by whatever I, uh, slides i have covered uh, previously two three slides from there you will be able to know from where this theta has come and what is this message signal how to get the received signal so once you get this received signal received signal is applied to two um, in phase and uh, out of the phase or the quadrature phase component uh, this is the vco right vco will generate the cos of uh, omega ct plus theta hat because you don't know the phase we have to actually estimate the phase we we want to estimate this phase but from the received signal what is coming 80 cos omega ct plus theta vco will uh, generate this signal and cos of omega ct plus theta hat will be multiplied with this incoming signal and the second job the it is doing is there is a 90 degree phase shifter and you are getting minus sine omega ct plus theta hat now this is also multi this minus sine omega ct plus theta hat is also multiplied with this received signal and after that these are passed through the low pass filters at the output of the low pass filter what you will get r80 cos of theta minus theta hat r80 sin theta minus theta hat so in what is the input to the low pass filter input to the low pass filter is because this cos uh, r where uh, where uh, this this gamma is there gamma is the gain of the vco input to the low pass filter is gamma square a square t cos theta minus theta hat sin theta minus theta hat once you multiply this 80 cos omega ct plus theta and this term cos omega ct plus theta hat you try to uh, solve uh, using the trigonometric formula what you will get is r square a t you will get r a t cos theta minus theta hat after the uh, once the multiplication is there you will get this r square a square t cos theta minus theta hat sin theta minus theta hat where uh, theta is the original phase and theta hat is the estimated phase and output of the low pass filter because uh, removing the high frequency signal you will be able to get r a t cos theta minus theta hat and on the other uh, branch you will get r a t sin theta minus theta hat then these two signals are uh, these two signals are uh, multiplied with each other right uh, r80 cos theta minus theta hat and r80 sin theta minus theta hat. that's what you are getting here uh, input to this loop filter there is a loop filter between vco and this multiplier these two signals coming from the low, low pass filters will be multiplied what is multiplied r80 cos theta minus theta hat r80 sin theta minus theta hat these two will be multiplied and you will get r square a square t cos theta minus theta hat sin theta minus theta hat and this is then applied to the uh, and if you try to solve it using the uh, using the trigonometric formula you will be able to get half r square a square t sin twice of theta minus theta hat right uh, a square t is the power of the message signal which is constant so this volt uh, this input of the voltage uh, vco the output of the loop filter to the vco here is actually proportional to the so input to the vco is proportional to sine 2 theta minus theta hat why because this a square t or gamma these are constants so in this sine 2 theta minus theta hat what is this is the output of the loop filter and this is applied to the vco right so input to vco is proportional to sine of twice theta minus theta hat now when theta minus theta hats become smaller sine 2 theta minus theta hat is actually 2 theta minus theta hat now this is um, when this is positive vco output frequency will increase when this is negative vco in output frequency will decrease and if it is zero it is the nominal frequency now when loop is locked when this loop is locked then your theta hat will be equal to theta and 
your uh, output will be proportional to the and this point the output this top branch this will also give you the demodulated signal now let me briefly explain the costas loop once again costas loop is to actually estimate the phase right how the phase will be estimated what you get is you you for to the received signal what is the received signal this at at is the message signal cos of omega ct plus theta this is the received signal all right you pass this received signal through these two multipliers what is the second input to the multiplier it is coming from the vco vco is producing uh, cos of omega ct plus theta hat right so this is applied directly and multiplied with this signal and for the other branch it is 90 degree phase shift and what you will get is minus sin omega ct plus theta hat this is also multiplied now these two in these two are applied to the low pass filter low pass filter will remove the high frequencies and what you will get at the output of the low pass filter is r80 cos theta minus theta hat r80 sin theta minus theta hat and these two signals which are the output of the low pass filter are multiplied here to get r square a square t cos theta minus theta hat and sin theta minus theta hat these are further applied to a loop filter this is this small block uh, i'm sorry for the diagram not clear this this small block is the loop filter it's a low pass filter basically this is a loop filter uh, the output of the loop loop filter will go to the input of the vco right and if you try to solve this trigonometrically what you will get is half r square a square t sin 2 theta minus theta hat this is what this is in this is the uh, and let me explain this a square t is a constant because this is the power of the message signal gamma is constant so input to vco so this value is actually input to vco so input to vco is proportional to sin of 2 theta minus theta hat right now theta minus the, when theta minus theta hat because we are trying to estimate it and the loop is a feedback loop as as this uh, difference is becoming smaller sin 2 theta minus theta hat is becoming approximately equal to 2 theta minus theta hat when this difference is positive the vco output frequency will increase when this difference is negative we see output frequency will decrease and when the loop will be log theta hat will become equal to theta and the top branch and as, as i said the costas loop can be used for the carrier synchronization and for the demodulation purpose also the top branch the output of the top branch will actually give you the demodulated signal also because it is giving the demodulated signal also you are directly getting at signal from here so this is the demodulated Uh, signal also which is received from the uh, which is actually received at the receiver so you your costas loop is doing two uh, jobs one is it is performing the demodulation also and at the same time it is doing the carrier synchronization carrier synchronization means it is uh, it uh, this th uh, the carrier is synchronized because we are we are estimating the phase difference and we are trying to i uh, put a loop here so that we will be able to estimate the phase correctly so that is known as carrier synchronization right so this finishes actually your four chapters uh, of uh, commu uh, digital communication right uh, i have tried to cover each and every small topic uh, which is there in your syllabus and from next time onwards i will uh, i will start with the uh, channel coding which is very important uh, concept and you will find uh, some questions in your uh, final exam also from that chapter thank you very much if any questions are there you can ask thank you very much for attending the